everyone, so today I'm going to put on makeup. I'm gonna do some fall makeup. I don't really know what I wanna do, but I think I wanna do kind of like an orange monochrome situation. I'm covering it right now, but there is a pile of clothes on my bed, and that is because after this, I am filming a fall lookbook, like a layered fall lookbook of looks that are for fall and layered if you didn't put that together yourself. So I wanna do some nice fall makeup. I figured I might as well film it because if I don't, y'all are gonna ask for a tutorial anyways. So I might as well just hit it, do a little one-two YouTube punch and put on some makeup and make it fall. And I'm gonna stop talking and just start putting on makeup. Okay, let's start um, with, I think I'm just gonna start with some tinted moisturizer. I haven't been wear really wearing foundation lately. I have been wearing the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic uh, tinted moisturizer. Oh my god. I just squirted it straight onto my hand. Ugh. So, I'm just going to... Why am I a mess? I just dripped tinted moisturizer. Thankfully, I'm just wearing, like, my gross PJs. Not the sweater. This is a pretty nice... It's not a nice sweater. It's a sweater from fucking Costco. But it's not, like, a grubby sweater, you know? Everybody has their, like, grubby, comfy sweater that you wear, like, for like groceries or just laying around the house or when you're sick and you just want to be comfortable like those type of sweaters you know what's yours mine is probably either this one because it's really soft but thin so i don't get too hot or i have a four year strong hoodie that my old manager at Hot Topic gave me and it is just it's the perfect amount of oversized it's a perfect amount of worn in where it's like kind of thinned out but it feels like like you know when a hoodie starts to feel like a towel that's when you know the hoodie is has reached like maximum comfort level um this is hyaluronic uh this is the pretty fresh concealer uh yeah that level is the best Y'all hear the rain outside? Oh my god. I woke up this morning, watched Bailey Sarian, which I don't watch Bailey Sarian a lot. I really, really like Bailey Sarian, so this is no shade to Bailey Sarian. But the thing is, is I have consumed so much true crime content, and mostly via podcasts that are, you know, either a full series, like multiple hours of series long or at least like an hour and a half long so when i've listened to a three part two hours each part podcast on jeffrey dahmer when i listen to just something that's like only a half hour long about jeffrey dahmer i'm like what's the point i like i already know all that information and more and there's only a handful of true crime cases that i can continue listening about you know what i mean like there's, I can't even like think of one, but there's only probably like, like the Susan Powell case. That's one that I can listen to a bunch of different, like either podcasts or videos or, you know, whatever it is about it because there's so much information and it's all so fucking wild. But, you know, a lot of the time with like especially a lot of the time with like the really infamous serial killers I don't really want to listen to what they did over and over and over because I've just already heard the story you know so uh but I was listening to Bailey Sarian do um I think her newest episode of murder mystery and makeup which was about a story that I hadn't heard of before and then I was just like laying on my couch <laughs> um I was laying on my couch and then I started listening to her Dark History podcast. And I was just sitting with my hot coffee and the window was open and I could hear the rain outside. We're supposed to get like a rain storm in Vancouver. So uh, it's gonna be interesting tonight. But I was just like, you know what? It's time, it's time. We're making fall content today. Also speaking of serial killers and true crime, I just feel like every, especially spooky season, um, but I just feel like we just need a reminder. Serial killers should not be celebrities and we should not glorify serial killers. Serial killers are pieces of fucking garbage and can you please stop making movies about Ted Bundy? And this is from somebody like, Ted Bundy is the story that hits me the most. It is my favorite murder, if you know what I mean. Like I have consumed, I have read or listened to The Stranger Beside Me like 
three times. I've watched the documentaries. I've listened to so many podcasts. Like I, that one like truly scares me the most and truly like hits me in a spot. So maybe it's just because Ted Bundy is the ultimate boogeyman in my head. But like any serial killer, stop. Like, can we just, I understand that true crime is like this boom and it's a way to make money, but do we really need another fucking Ted Bundy movie? No, we don't, we don't. I also, um, so for this, before we continue talking, um, I'm gonna be using the ColourPop um, QAF, no, Yes Please palette, and I'm also gonna be using my Depotted Jeffree Star shadows. Just use whatever shadows I'm gonna be using, a lot of like burnt oranges and bright oranges and like kind of camel browns. So just whatever shades you have in your collection that are, you know, similar will work. Can we stop also? Do I wanna put this on my lid? Yeah. Um, can we stop also? I can't stand true crime documentaries where it's just him, like the serial killer talking and like explaining himself. Like there was that John Wayne Gacy docu docu-series on Peacock for a while and I started it, but I just couldn't, I couldn't watch it because it's literally just him explaining himself and him being a fucking manipulative sociopath, like piece of fucking garbage, I couldn't do it. Or even the Ted Bundy tapes. I watched the Ted Bundy ta tapes, but I just fucking, ugh, mm, it makes me so mad. Like I don't, I don't wanna hear about your reasoning about why you did what you did. I don't wanna hear about your fucking explanations and you, I don't wanna hear you manipulate people. Like, I don't wanna hear it. That's why I really, really enjoyed the docu-series on Amazon. I can't remember the name of it, um, but it was about the victims of Ted Bundy. And it was about Seattle and Washington and really like the history and the context of Ted Bundy's actions. Uh, I can't think of the word, but it was, it was so interesting because one, you heard from the victims and people connected to the victims, but you also heard from the, it was really about like, I don't know how to describe it. It was about, like it really gave context for being a woman in that time. Um, it talked to a lot of the like female detectives. It talked to the uh, female defense attorney that defended Ted Bundy. Um, it talked so much about all of these things that you never hear about. It really just gave it a broader scope. Oh, it was the one that was um, Ted Bundy's long-term girlfriend, her and her daughter they were the ones talking in the documentary. And it was just so fascinating because I feel like that's how to do it because it's them telling their story, reclaiming their story. Um, and you don't hear from Ted Bundy at fucking all. And that's how it should be. That's really what it should be. You shouldn't hear from the fucking murderers. You should hear from the victims, hear from the victims. It's their story. I don't know. I just thought it was really interesting because not only you know do you hear this horror story from the people who lived it firsthand, but also it's so, it's so inspiring. It's, you know, it's so inspiring and it's so just like gives you such a, I don't know, I don't wanna say better, but like it gives you such a better understanding of what he did. Cause I feel like a lot of the time when people glorify serial killers, they put them in this realm that is, fake that is they're like a Jason Voorhees they're like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre they're like a Michael Myers and it takes away from the fact that women were murdered children were murdered and so I feel like watching a documentary like that where it is literally just the context the people that helped catch him the people that were most affected by his actions that's what people need to watch because then you, you, it forces you to confront the reality that this person was real and this person fucking destroyed lives and killed people. Okay, so I just laid down that warm brown. I buffed it out with like a camely brown and then I'm just going in with like a chocolate brown in the crease. But yeah, dude, I'm just tired of it. Like I, and like, you know, do you? Like, I don't understand how people could like 
wear a t-shirt or like have a mug with like Ted Bundy's face on it. I just, I don't, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just sensitive, which I am. I am a very sensitive person when it comes to stuff like this. Like I think maybe because I've consumed so much of it that like it's not just a horror story. And I feel like a lot of people sometimes just think of it as a horror story. And to me, it's not a horror story. It is a real life event that, that was truly horrific. You know, I don't know. I digress. Um, I think we're gonna move on to face because I really wanna do some like warm blush. I really wanna do this orangey blush from Jaclyn Cosmetics. Um, this is the Rouge Romance palette and I'm gonna use the shade Tea Room right here. And I'm going to start by applying it just at the edge of where my eyeshadow is. Really buff it all the way around. Ooh, uh-oh. But yeah, that's my Ted Bundy is a piece of shit and like serial killers shouldn't be horror icons, you know? And I get it because it's like they are because they are real life horror icons. The horror icons, they're still icons. Like don't, who is it? Bailey Sarian? It says, um, like get better icons. Is that what she says? Again, I don't watch a ton of Bailey Sarian. Love her, but I don't watch a ton of her. Oh my God, this is stunning. I feel like my camera, like my filming setup kind of washes out the color a little bit. I'm going to take this across. I'm going to do a little bit of an orangey pink nose because we're going into fall and that makes it look like, you know, you're like chilly. And then I am going to take a little bit of Pretty Posh and bring it down a little bit because I don't want to do this bright orange all the way across. I'm going, oh my God. I'm going to switch brushes though. What are your favorite horror movies though? Just speaking about like fall, creepy things, scary things. What are your favorite horror movies? I grew up, my mom was a, it still is. My mom has seen every shitty horror movie on the Oxygen Network, on the Sci-Fi Network, on any network you can find. My mom has seen it all. So I grew up, <clears throat> I think the first scary movie that I like truly remember and that scared the shit out of me was Jeepers Creepers, the, again, the old one from like the 80s about the vampire that lived next door. So weird. I'm gonna use just my Nabla bronzer because when in doubt. So I watched so many horror movies growing up. Like I still, to this day, cannot watch Jeepers Creepers. I cannot. It scares the shit out of me because I watched it way too young. If I hear somebody whistling like Jeepers Creepers, I'm like, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, I can't do it scares the shit out of me. But also like I haven't seen Friday the 13th and I didn't grow up watching like Nightmare on Elm Street or Halloween, like a lot of the like classic ones. Um, of course I like watched Scream and stuff, but I don't know. Or like I can't fuck with exorcism movies. Maybe it's because I grew up Catholic and it just hits a little too, maybe it just hits like a certain Catholicism spot that I'm like, Ew, that scares the shit out of me, but I can't do exorcist movies. Besides The Conjuring, I really, really enjoy The Conjuring movies. I just think they're well done and they're fucking creepy, creepy. Um, I am going to do, I'm gonna do the Jaclyn Hill accent lighting powder highlight thing. Um, and I'm just going to do this on bridge of my nose and the tip of my nose. But yeah, I haven't seen the original Exorcist. I also haven't seen Carrie. Last year, I made like a, um, a board. I like filled a whiteboard with a bunch of like horror movies that I had never seen and I was trying to like go down the list. I only got like maybe like a third of the way in because I started watching all of the Final Destination movies. I love campy, shitty, fun horror. And that's what I think, and that's what I think the Final Destination movies are. They are so good, bad, you know, bad, good, like House of Wax. We watched House of Wax the other night. It is just, it is creepy, it's campy, it's fun, it's scary. The concept is just, <gasps> it's fun. Camera's overheating. I'm gonna go fill in my eyebrows really quick. I'm really liking this look though, it's fun. Um, and then we will be back. 
Okay, eyebrows are on. I highlighted my brow bone with the same Jaclyn Cosmetics Loose Highlight. Um, I also did kind of intensify and blend down the burnt orange a little bit lower as well. So that's what we got. I love this. I love this. It's pretty basic, but what the fuck ever. I don't care. I'm having fun. Um, campy horror. I love like shitty horror movies, you know? Let's see me in, shall we? Even though I don't even know what we're doing with this makeup next. Um, I think they're just so fun. I think they're just fun and like, I don't know. I, I don't like true fucking horror. Like I'm the type of bitch that I want to laugh and scream when I go into a haunted house. I don't want, like I hate the haunted houses that are like, they pick everybody's like actual phobias like claustrophobia and like stuff like that like i hate <laughs> ones like that those make me too anxious and too scared i'm a little bit of a baby when it comes to those but i fucking love like fun horror you know what i mean my favorite scary movie of all time though is the descent that one is not really campy it's just fucking scary if you haven't seen The Descent, highly recommend. It's got everything. A bunch of girls. I'm gonna use this ColourPop Brown liquid liner. It's got girls going on a trip together. It's got claustrophobia. It's got affairs. It's got, it's got main characters with trauma. The only thing it doesn't have that most horror movies do is a sex scene. Okay, I'm just gonna do like a kind of big wing. But the creatures in The Descent are so fucking scary. Like so, Scary. They scare the fuck out of me every time I watch it. And I've watched it, like, this has been my favorite scary movie since I was, like, in ninth grade. So I've seen it so many times. And it still scares me. I still jump, even though I know exactly when every single jump is coming. How do you feel about a horror movie remake? I don't know what, I'm, what else I'm gonna do. I kinda, oh, I think I wanna add some, like, lower lashes with this so just add a little bit of i enjoy a horror movie remake i have feelings about the rob zombie halloween remake um sexual assault trigger warning i never ever 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 think that a rape scene is necessary in a movie never you can allude to it and then pan the camera away um but showing it never necessary Never, ever, 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 ever necessary. I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. It's a step too far, in my opinion. Um, other than that, I really enjoy the Rob Zombie Halloween remake. I love how much they really go into Michael Myers as a character. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was really fucking good. Again, just don't like that scene. I also fucking love the Child's Play remake. I thought that was so fun. And again, campy, shitty horror. But if you haven't seen it, it's basically like, instead of a Chucky doll, you know, just doing the thing, like doll things that dolls do, um, the Chucky doll is almost like an Alexa or a Google. And I just think that's a really cool way to update it because aren't we all low-key scared that our alexas are gonna become like murderous and villainous and terrifying probably but it also has aubrey plaza as like the mom i don't know i really really liked it same with i really liked the poltergeist remake i just thought again it was just like i like a remake where it's just like updated like they just update it they take the same premise they take all the same things that we liked about the first one and just update it. Or what I liked about the Halloween remake is they updated it, but they also like expanded on it in a good way. I also loved the like Halloween sequel that came out with Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh my God, that one was so fucking badass. I loved it also this is just the pacifica dream big mascara i'm not really being super particular with it because i'm just trying to get my lashes black to prep for fake eyelashes like amityville horror that is another one that me and my mom grew up watching and another one that like again 
being Catholic scared the shit out of me. Like the scene where the priest comes in and he's just covered in flies. Like, oh, scared the fuck out of me as a kid. Um, and I did also like the remake because I felt like it was just a remake, you know, just an upgraded remake. This mascara is not the best for bottom lashes. It's the only thing that I'm not the biggest fan of, but I love, you can twist it and make it like short and chonky, or you can twist it the other way and it makes it like a skinny legend. It's fun. See, I just love like a messy lower lash line, like almost when it looks like you just purposely like pressed your wet eyelashes to your lower lash line. You know what I mean? My camera is gonna die. So I think I'm going to finish this off camera and put on some eyelashes and then maybe change. I don't know. We'll freaking see. But I'm gonna go uh, switch out my camera battery. Okay, I went and did my hair. Also, I dyed my hair a little darker. I wanted to go for like a like a cranberry color. So this is Manic Panic Vampire Red mixed about half and half, maybe a little bit more red than purple, but I mixed it with Brad Mondo's Super Purple. I love it. Also, my friend cut my hair, so it's a little bit shorter now. Um, anyways, lashes are on. These are the Kiss Foam Ink and Chiffon, and I feel like I want to deepen everything up a little bit. Now that my hair is down, I think I want to do a dark lip, even though I'm doing a lookbook next, and so I feel like this is going to go everywhere so this may be a really bad idea but I'm gonna send it anyways because it's fall and I love this is the perfect fall red this is the perfect fall red this is the uh, Milani Amore satin in elegant and this is one it matches my hair pretty well um, it's comfortable it's beautiful it does transfer so I'm gonna like really pat it down and try to like do some tricks to make it not so transfery um, but I think I want to add a little bit more blush I think I just want it I want everything punched up a little bit I'm gonna go in with tea room the orange blush and I'm just going to dust it on the top of my cheekbones right here oh yeah that's exactly it that's exactly what I want oh fuck yeah mm. yup I'm gonna dust it a little bit more across the bridge of my nose too that really brought it to where I wanted it I'm gonna bring it a little bit underneath my eyes as well. I feel like, oh, maybe I need to turn down the brightness. Is that better? I tried to turn down my brightness because I feel like I was just washing all the colors out and I feel like that's closer to what I'm talking about. This is stunning. Why is there fuzzies all over my face? Hmm. Anyways, um, I don't remember what I was talking about before I put on my lashes, so. Whatever, I know I was talking about scary movies, but I don't remember what my next point was, and we're almost done anyway. So, um, we're just gonna send it and put on some lipstick. I need a rug because we have hardwoods in hardwoods. Ooh, we have hardwood in here, and my chair just flies. It just does whatever it wants to. Um, okay, I am going to put on this lipstick. Come on. Oh. Mmm. Stunning. Incredible. I love this lip color. Okay, I'm not gonna bother changing because I'm literally about to put on five different outfits. So I think we're just gonna call this tutorial there. I love this, it's so fun, it's really simple. The thing that I like about this makeup too is if you're going somewhere where you have to wear a mask, you can just, you know, not put on the lip and if you're still wearing a mask, you still get this beautiful, like blushy fall look. Like you still get that fall vibe with the warmth and the blushiness. You can still get it and wear a mask. So that's another reason why I really like this look. I've been really digging the like blush into the eyeshadow, into the like temples look. Oh, I'm obsessed. So yeah, be on the lookout. I have a feeling that I'm going to put up the lookbook first just because they're easier to edit and then this. So if you haven't already seen the lookbook, I will have it linked in the cards or maybe at the end, maybe here or something um please give this video a like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my other videos i love you all so much and i will see you in my next one bye